Okay, okay, I know, I know, I've spoken about hard rubber versus metal mouthpieces before on my channel. It's a really interesting topic, but I got another question about it this week from one of my sax school students. Which one should I go for, hard rubber or metal? Which mouthpiece is gonna give me my perfect saxophone sound? It's a really good question. So this week, what I thought I'd do is I'd actually have a chat with one of the guys who's really regarded as the experts in the world these days on mouthpiece manufacture, that's Theo Wane. And I asked Theo, so Theo, what, what would I do? What, what is the right thing to do if you want to make a decision between a hard rubber mouthpiece or a metal mouthpiece, which one should I choose? And here's what he's got to say. Well, let me start off by saying, if you're in marching band, don't get a hard rubber mouthpiece. <laughs> 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 right? Because hard, hard rubber is actually an organic compound then made from latex, which is like a sap from a tree, mixed with sulfur, right? Okay. And um, so if you put it in the sun or in heat, it will uh, oxidize, it will turn green, and you will smell the sulfur, and it will both taste nasty, smell nasty, and uh, start to warp. So, That's interesting. So even like yeah. a modern hard rubber mouthpiece out in the sun a lot is not good. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. just a modern hard rubber mouthpiece is not, not a good thing in, out in the sun. And... Uh, so if you're in marching band, I suggest either, well, a plastic mouthpiece, although they're not, they don't sound very good. So if you get an ABS mouthpiece, uh, they tend to have bad facings um, and they tend to, uh, the, the plastic or the ABS doesn't resonate well. So that's why you actually get a plasticky type of sound. So I don't really that's recommend actually that. the, the qualities of the, of the material itself. Yeah. Yeah, they make a huge difference. Yeah, we did, we did a huge experiment. I was really curious about this. So, I mean, I really, we really made multiple mouthpieces of the same mouthpiece in every material, vintage and new, that I could find. And so then we did a double blind test with several people playing and listening. And anybody who says that material doesn't make a dis difference, I can just, I'll just say, ah, that was not our direct double blind okay. finding. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, so what we found is that everybody hears the same differences. Like everybody could tell a wood was a wood mouthpiece or a metal was a metal, you know, a brass mouthpiece is a brass mouthpiece or the differences between a, a stainless steel and a brass versus an aluminum mouthpiece. Okay. People liked ones more than others. Like they might like the woody sound but everybody yeah. heard the same thing. So in my experience, um, material does make a very a, a difference. There isn't a right answer um, other than that we found aluminum sounds really bad. Nobody liked the sound of aluminum, does not resonate well. Um, and uh, people generally liked brass, which is a good thing because there's a, most mouth, metal mouthpieces yeah. are made from brass. That's what they're and, made from, right? Yeah, and uh, people loved hard rubber, particularly like very high quality, either vintage type or vin you know pure hard rubber. And what makes hard rubber pure is the lack of uh, accelerants and like carbon black in it. Okay, that's an interesting question too, Theo. So, um, you know, a more recognized brand or a, a better quality mouthpiece mm -hmm. is going to be made, hard rubber mouthpiece is going to be made of better materials, the, right. the stock. And that's going to have a bearing on the type of sound that you get from it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, vintage hard rubber became uh, popular for a reason. It's actually very resonant. It has very good resonant properties, right? Okay. That's why it's been hard to usurp it. Um, even, even though it, it turns green and it's not, <laughs> you know, and you don't, if you got a hard rubber, don't wash it in hot water. Wash it with cold water. You know, soap yeah. is fine. But do it with cold water, not hot water. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm at the shop and I want to I wanna treat myself to, um, you know, I want to get myself a good mouthpiece and this, this question of hard rubber and metal. Yeah. So right. what you're saying is that uh, the, the different materials are going to give me a different sort of sound. So I'm not in a marching band. I'm just um, I'm playing for my own enjoyment or in a jam session or something. Yeah. So how do I make, what's the first thing I should think about in choosing between those two? Right. Um, actually, how it feels in your mouth. 
because uh, a metal mouthpiece, because it's a much denser, heavier material, they all are much thinner, right, than a hard yeah. rubber mouthpiece. The dimension. Just in girth, thing. just in dimension, yeah. Hard rubber, uh, metal mouthpiece will be smaller in diameter. Hard rubber will almost always be bigger. So it'll feel very different in your mouth, right? So yeah. there are a lot of people more than others, I suppose. I'm sorry? That'll suit some people more than others. That's right. That's right. And again, there's not a right answer here. There really isn't. And what I've found is that we make both because some people just, they're like, I just like hard rubber. I just, you know, it's just what I feel comfortable with. And there are other people saying, I just don't like hard rubber. I just love metal mouthpieces. I just yeah. work. And so people tend to primarily click with, you know, uh, you know, with one or the other. And so, more about yeah. finding the mouthpiece that feels comfortable to you. Okay. And then, then I suppose you need to make the decision about what sort of internal size or oh, so internal uh, qualities and right. shape and suit the sort of playing that you want to do. Right. Cause if you want that bright rock and roll sound, you can do that with a hard rubber and you can do that with a metal. And if you want a dark, deep, rich, you know, kind of tubby sound. You can do that with uh, metal and you can do that with uh, hard rubber. Hey, I hope you're paying attention because that was really, really important. And this is something I'm always telling people, you know, you can use a metal mouthpiece or a hard rubber mouthpiece for either job to get whatever sound you're looking for. It really comes down to the sort of mouthpiece that suits you and also the internal dimensions, the shapes, the quality to the inside of that mouthpiece. That's what gives you the sound more so than the actual material. Let's keep going. The metal does tend to have kind of a, like a little ting, a little ring to it. And that's what people are talking about when they say it's brighter. But like you, like you mentioned, you're absolutely right that it's not really brighter, but you can get a kind of ring with the metal. Whereas the, the hard rubber, I would say, you get a resonance more than a ring. And yeah. that's because of the qualities of the different materials, right? That's right. And the way they that's vibrate. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I forgot to mention that I also asked Theo about the chamber of the mouthpiece and how that affects the sound, because this is one of the big things that makes a difference and you should look out for when you're choosing your mouthpiece. You can think of a chamber like light, right? So um, if you take light and you focus it down into a small beam, that like a small chamber, right? You get, you get a uh, laser beam or a spotlight, right? And it's good when you want to cast light in a very specific point, right? As you open up that light, you get a floodlight, which can illuminate a large area, right? So a big fat sound, you're going to need a big chamber, right? Right. And to get a really pointed, like a good rock and roll sound, usually works better, right, with a uh, small chamber. Small so chamber. Why, so how can somebody, because not all mouthpieces say, this is a big chamber, this is a small chamber. Right. So real easy ballpark thing, actually just picking up and looking through a mouthpiece. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. And you can see yeah. one, compare one to the other. Yeah. So the core, right, is the part that actually on the inside of the mouthpieces touches the cork your neck cork, right? right? That's what yeah. actually connects, right? So using the bore as a baseline, if the chamber or very center inside of the mouthpiece is bigger than the bore, you've got a large chamber. If it's the same size as the bore, that's a medium chamber. If it's smaller than the bore, you've got a small chamber. I love that tip because you can instantly pick up a mouthpiece in the shop and see whether it's got a big chamber or a small chamber. It's a really quick way to identify things. Personally, I love big chamber mouthpieces. All my mouthpieces are big chamber mouthpieces. It's the sound that I like, but maybe you like a small chamber mouthpiece. Also, there's, the baffle is really, really important. And in the other video that I made with Theo, he, we talk a load about baffles, so you definitely want to check that out. I'll put a link up above for that. So ultimately though, the thing about a mouthpiece and choosing the right one for you is to find that mouthpiece that's gonna light you up and really get you excited about playing saxophone. Yeah, that's the whole point. It's once, you, once you're inspired, right? Once you're inspired, then you want to practice. 
then you want to play. You know, that it's not work anymore, right? It's fun. And um, there's like a freedom that gets loose. And, and we're very blessed with the saxophone because it's, it's, you can do so much. So the saxophone is, it's my favorite instrument because it doesn't lock you in. You can, you can at one moment be playing this small staccato, nice little phrase, and the next moment, drop your jaw, bend that note, a whole pitch, right? And then, and just get a flexibility and, you know, that just makes the saxophone magic. And so finding a mouthpiece that allows you all of those dynamics and expressive qualities, right? Um, that's the key, right? That's awesome. the key and that's, that's when the magic happens, yeah. yeah. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. I love talking with Theo, he's such a clever guy. And if those things we've talked about today have been helpful to you, let me know in a comment today. Also, let me know in a comment what sort of mouthpiece you play on. Is it a hard rubber? Is it a metal? How did you make that decision? Be interesting for me to know. Don't forget to check out the other video I made with Theo as well for more tips on choosing mouthpieces. And if it's your first time here, don't forget to subscribe because I'm making videos all the time and I don't want you to miss out on any of them because I know they're gonna help you to enjoy the process of learning saxophone and um, hopefully give you some top, top tips and techniques along the way as well. If you wanna find out more about Sax School, you can get a 30-day trial over at mcgillmusic.com. You can join the thousands of learners from all around the world that are using my Sax School lessons to improve and also connect with other saxophone players and have a load of fun with the process of learning saxophone. So anyway, thanks for watching. Keep practicing hard. I'll catch you next time. Super. Brilliant. Yeah, good to see you, right. Nigel. Thanks yeah. much, Theo. Yep, you bet. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>